Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I mean every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, my brothers and sisters. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day to always pour your heart out to Jesus and to always trust him at all given times, even when it don't make sense, even when it's not adding up, even when you don't understand what Jesus is doing right now. You continue to trust Jesus anyway because at the end of the day, it is Jesus that's got your back to the very end. It is Jesus that's going to ride with you until the wheels fall off. Jesus is too faithful, my brothers and sisters, to fail you. He can't fail you, my brothers and sisters. And don't think for one second that you don't see anything, that you don't hear anything, that he is not working. He is always at work. He is working on your behalf right now today, my brothers and sisters. And it's always important to always open up your heart to Jesus. Always have a conversation with Jesus. Let him know what's going on. Let him know how you're feeling right now. He understand. If nobody understands your situation, your circumstances, it is Jesus. But you have to give Jesus an invitation into your life, my brothers and sisters. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise hallelujah. It is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, hallelujah, he watches over every last one of us and he has it in the palm of his hands and he is working everything out to his perfect will. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or to your life or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, we just come before you on this beautiful day, this blessed day, this awesome day. The day, Heavenly Father, God, that you have made. And Heavenly Father, God, we're so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, God, because you make all things new. We thank you, Father God, because you're always available for those who cry out your name, for those who seek you, Father God. And Father God, you're always on time, Father God. You're never too late and you're never too early. Heavenly Father God, you continue to have your way with your sons, your daughters, even myself. You continue to lift us up right now today, Father God. You continue to soften our hearts right now today, Father God. You, Heavenly Father God, open our eyes so we can see whatever it is, Father God, that we need to see from you clearly. Open our ears so we can hear whatever it is, Father God, that we need to hear from your voice right now. Father God, send us a sign right now today, Father God. Send us an angel right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we know that you're still in control, that you're still in charge, Father God. And Heavenly Father God, it's not too hard, it's not too difficult for you, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you continue to give us. We thank you, Father God, for how patient you are with us, God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now that's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God. Give me all things. Give me all praise. Give me all glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we magnify your name today. We glorify your name today, and we exalt your holy name right now because you're a king of kings, you're a lord of lords. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and she never turn by voice today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your time. This is your moment. Hallelujah. That I know for a fact that you're about to show up, that I know for a fact that you're about to show out. 
I believe and I declare the decree right now today in the mighty name of Jesus that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will and you should get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. That house that you built on solid ground. That house that you built on solid foundation. That house that cannot be moved, shaken, nor bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are welcome right now. You invite right now to enter to the house of the Lord right here in your sanctuary right here on your YouTube channel right here on your platform right here in my brother's homes, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for your healing and restoration for my brothers and sisters right now today. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for confirmation and more discernment for my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to lay your hands on every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today, Father God. Lift their spirits up right now today, Father God. Just speak a word to their ear right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to grab them by the hand right now and let your sons and your daughters know that you got them right now. Let them know, Father God, they can rest in you. Let them know, Father God, that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them know, Father God, that they can just rest in your words and rest in your promises, Father God, that they ain't got to worry no more. They ain't, they ain't have to stress out no more. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brothers and my sisters like right now today. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to comfort them right now today, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, to give him peace right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you for a favor. In the favor that I'm asking you for, Jesus, I'm asking you for a blessing for my brothers and sisters, a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, a miracle for my brothers and sisters, for you to turn things around for my brothers and sisters, for you to open up a door for my brothers and sisters, that you would send rain, Father God, because their drought season is over with, Father God, because this is their due time and this is their due season. Glory, hallelujah. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to send them the help they need right now. Because, Father God, you know what they're going through. Father God, you know what they're facing. And, Father God, we believe in you. We trust in you, Father God, because all things is possible. Because we have faith in you. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you're a comforter. I'm asking right now today for you to control our thoughts, control our mind, so we hear your soft, still voice. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sins today. Known and unknown right now, wash us through your blood right now. Clean us, that's why this now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today. For, for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for never remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my sisters, all my brothers today, one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue, the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you, I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't. Thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I'm, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more. I want more. I want more, you Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. He is so awesome and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Today's word is don't let the front door hit you on your way out. Do not let the front door hit you on your way out. What I'm saying. What I'm saying today to you my sisters and brothers. There's a lot of people. Who do not like you. And the reason why they don't like you. Because you know. 
exactly who you are and they still struggling to find out who they are. They've been taking notes on you. They've been monitoring you, wondering how you still can get up and still be the same person who you are every single day, even though that you are going through things, even though that you are facing um, scrubber situation, that you're going through scrutiny, that you're going through setbacks and delays, but you still have that same smile on your face. You still have that same glow on you. You still have that same positive energy about yourself. But most of all, my sisters and brothers, you still know exactly who you are. They might have some kind of idea of what's going on, but they don't know all the details what's going on with you. And they looking at you, they say, but how is this man able to do this every single day? And I know something going on with him. How in the world is she able to do this every single day? I know there's something going on. They don't like it because you know who you are in Christ. They know who you are in the spirit. They know this. Don't think for one second that they're not watching you. Like they some kind of FBI, like they work for the Hoover building. Don't think that they've been jotting down notes about you. Don't think for one second they have not been studying you because they've been doing that on an everyday, regular basis. See, when you know who you are, you stand on business. See, a lot of people can't stand who you are because they are still struggling in their area. They wonder how you know who you are, hallelujah, but they still don't know who they are. See, the reason why you know who you are, my brothers and sisters, is because you continue to pick up your crosses and you are following Jesus every day. You are in your word every single day. You are on your knees every single day. That's how you know who you are. See, they hear the word, but they're not studying the word. They're going to church for the show and for the limelight, but they don't want to be part of the church. That's why they're still struggling in that area right there, my brothers and sisters. And they never went to God. See, you go to God for everything. You don't go to God for some things. You go to God about every single thing concerning you. Regardless if you're going through good times or you're going through bad times or you're going through okay times. But you're still going to God. Which meaning is that you are still seeking the kingdom first. But they're seeking YouTube first. They're seeking Facebook first. They're seeking Instagram first. They're seeking what the world is saying and thinking about them first. And start a hallelujah seeking the kingdom first. That's why they're struggling right there in that area. And yes, it's going to be a lot of people going to walk out of your life. The reason why they walk into your life because they still don't know who, who they are. They're confused. But you are not confused because God is not a, a man that's bringing confusion. That's why they walk out of your life. But when they walk out of your life, tell them, say, go ahead and shut the front door. But don't let the door hit you on your way out. If you're going to walk out of my life, go right on here. I ain't about to cry behind you, and I'm sure not about to chase behind you either. See, when people walk out of your life, they expect you to cry. They expect you to chase after them. But see, when you don't cry after them, when you don't chase after them, they will, they'll hurt them more than anything. They cause they, because in their mind, they think it's all about them in a bag of chips. But when they see a real man of God and a real woman of God, and they standing ten toes down, they say, well, everybody else chase after me because they don't know who they are. That's why a person who don't know who they are, they will chase after nothing. But when you know who you are, you ain't chasing after nothing because you know who got everything for you in store. Come on now, I'm talking to somebody right now. This word is resonating with somebody right now. Somebody know what I'm talking about right now. Somebody is going through it right now. They wonder why what people don't like you. They wonder why so many people are walking out of your life. It's because they don't know who they are and they mad. Yes, they're going to talk about you, but let them talk. They talked about Jesus, didn't they? But Jesus didn't get mad and that did he? He said, love them anyway. He said, pray for them anyway. Because they still don't know who they are. Hallelujah. You got family members. Still don't know who they are, but they looking at you sideways because they say, well, oh, he think he better than somebody. Oh, she thinks she better than somebody. No, you don't think you better than nobody. You just realize who you are. 
And once you realize who you are, you ain't going back to the person who you used to be. And that's one, they, that's one thing they can't stand because in their mind, they still thinking that you're still that same person who you was before you gave your life over to Christ. See, the moment you gave your life over to Christ, my sisters, the moment that you gave your life over to Christ, my brothers, you was no longer that same person anymore. Right then and there, you knew exactly who you were. See, they are scrubbing in the area because they have not gave their life over to Christ. They got one foot in with Christ and the other foot in in the world. You can't have it that way. You got to pick and choose. You got to make a decision. Which one do you want? You want Christ or you want the world? Which one? And they are scrubbing in their area. They want their cake and ice cream and eat it too. But see, it can't work like that with God. You have to make a decision because you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to love one or you're going to hate the other one. See, right now, they're in between. They're like Napoleon ice cream. They got the vanilla, the, cho the chocolate, and the strawberry, and they're trying to have a mixture of it. No, you only got to pick and choose one flavor. Which flavor are you going to choose? Are you going to choose Christ or are you going to choose the world? Which one now? But see, your mind was made up, my sisters. Your mind was made up, my brothers, who you want to choose and who you want to rock with and who you want to roll with. See, you roll with Christ because you know Christ stands for something. See, they mad because they don't stand for nothing because they walking with nothing and they are following nothing. Who going to follow somebody who don't have nothing and who ain't got nothing going for themselves? I know about it. But see, when you stand for something and you walking with something, you know that you got everything in store for you, my brothers and sisters. That's another reason why they don't like you. But it's okay. You can't expect everybody to like you. God didn't put you on this planet called Earth for everybody to like you, for everybody to roll with you. Long as Jesus like you, long as Jesus is rolling with you, long as Jesus is your only friend, you got everything you need, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you how it is. My grandma always say this. If they don't like you, grandson, tell them to close the front door, but make sure they don't hit them on their way out. I said, okay, grandma. He said, they don't like you, tell them to go to the front door. But make sure they don't slam it on their way out. And make sure it don't hit them on their way out. You ain't got no reason to chase after them. You ain't got no reason to cry after them. Because they let you know that they don't want nothing. They let you know they was never real and they was never loyal to you in the first place. Because they were never real and loyal to themselves. Because the real person who know Christ, who love in Christ, they will never leave you in the first place. They will never walk out of your life in the first place. That's when it started making sense to me. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Is this word making sense to somebody right now? Is it really resonating with somebody right now? Why people don't like you? Why they are mad at you? Why they continue to walk out of your life? It's because they don't know who they are. That's what it is. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Let's turn about to John chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 60 through 66. That's John chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 60 through 66. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is hard teaching. Who can accept it? Right now, they mad. Right now, they question who they really are. Now, the whole time you've been rocking with Jesus, the whole time you've been following Jesus, and all of a sudden, you don't understand his teaching, and all of a sudden, it's hard. And I know he broke it down to you in ways that even a toddler can understand his teaching. The reason why they want, the reason why they didn't understand his teaching because they didn't want the teaching to be part of them in the first place. That's why it was so hard. That's why it was difficult. That's why they was grumbling. And that's why they was questioning. Because they didn't want the word to be taught to them. They want the world to teach them the, the, about life and not Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? A word that his disciples were grumbling about this. Jesus said to them, does this offend you? What if you see the son of man ascend to where he was before? The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and there are life. Yet there are some of you who do not what? Believe. They don't believe. Mm. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who will betray him. 
He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to come to me unless the Father hath enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned their back and no longer followed him. Because why? They didn't know who they was. Why? Because they didn't want to follow the rules. You know why they didn't follow him? Because they were still struggling with the word and the world. They wanted their cake and ice cream and eat it too. But Jesus said he knew this from the beginning. You see, we don't know this because when people walk out of our life and turn their back against us, we get in our way, we get in our feelings. But Jesus said, if you would just ask me, I would have told you who the one that's going to betray you. See, it never surprised to Jesus, but it's always surprised to us when people walk out of our life. It's always a surprise to us when people turn their back on us. But Jesus said, I knew who's going to turn their back on you. I knew who's going to betray you. I knew who didn't believe in you. I knew who was mad at you. I knew who was taking notes down on you. I knew who was monitoring you. It's because they don't know who they are and they wonder how you continue to be the same person who you are on an everyday, daily basis. They wonder how you ever continue to walk with this smile on your face, continue to, to pray and praise in the spirit every day, knowing that you're going through what you're going through. They say, how in this world that this man able to do this? How in the world is this woman able to do this? How, in the, how is this possible? It's because you're walking with the true living God. Because the word of God says the word, the word gives spirit. The spirit is the word. See, you in the word, and the word gives you the spirit, and the spirit that lives in you. Hallelujah. It's the spirit that lives in you. But see, the spirit don't live in them. It's because they're too busy going on what's happening in the world. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why they walked out of Jesus' life. That's why they walked out of your life because Jesus knew who he was. See, the, 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 the other disciples, they didn't know who they were because they knew who they were, that they were faithful, that they were loyal. First of all, they would never get mad. Second of all, they would never grumble. Third of all, they'd have been faithful. They'd have been loyal to Jesus. They still, they still wanted to be a part of the ministry. They didn't know who they were. I'm going to tell you why. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you what? You are, hallelujah, the Holy One of God. See, the other twelve knew who Jesus was. They knew. Peter one was bold enough and stood up and said, no, Jesus, you crazy? We know who you are. We know that you're the only and the Holy One of God. See, when you know who you are, you're going to stand ten toes down. You don't care what people think about you. You don't care what people say about you. You don't care who walk out of your life. You don't care who turn their back against you. You don't care how people sit down and take down notes and monitor you. You don't care how they roll their eyes at you. You don't care how they stir their nose at you because you know exactly who you are. See, when you know who you are, you stand on business. When you know who you are, you stand in the word of God, knowing that God got your back, knowing that God is too faithful, my brothers and sisters, that he will not fail you, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But if they want to walk out of your life, and they want to turn their back against you, tell them to go to the front door, but make sure it don't hit them on their way out. Hallelujah. Who I'm talking to today? Who's this word for today? Because somebody just walked out of your life. Somebody just betrayed you. But don't you dare cry after them. Don't you dare chase after them. When you know who you are, you're going to always stand on business. Is the point that I'm making. Are you standing on business today, my sisters? Are you standing on business today, my brothers? And I believe and I declare to my sisters and my brothers that y'all guys are standing on business because you know exactly who you are in Christ. If they want to be mad at you, let them get mad. But tell them to go to the front door. But make sure it don't hit them on their way out. Hallelujah. And if this word is for you, you know God is talking to you, say thank you, Lord. I received this word today because this word is for me right now. And if, and if this word moved to your spirit today and, and it touched your soul today, go and hit this like button if you like. 
Hit the subscribe button too if you'd like to as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying that simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm 7 Minutes LT. I love every last one of y'all. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed day today. Always keep Jesus first place and know for a fact that Jesus got your back to the very end. Stay blessed.